You know, today we're going to talk about the king of all cartridges. And it's not what you might think. It's not the 3006, it's not the 308, it's not even the 270 Winchester, and certainly not the 223. In my personal humble opinion, the king of all cartridges is the 22, the 22 Rimfire. Now, let me explain a little bit about why I think it's such an important uh, thing in our in our firearms culture. First of all, let's talk a little bit about its history. Uh, it was it was brought out back in the uh, black powder days. Uh, the um, 22 short was the first of them, and uh, with its 29 grain bullet and a short little case, and it's still around. Um, then that was that was enhanced by adding a, a longer case to the 29 grain uh, bullet and uh, speeding it up a little bit. Uh, not too long after that, certain deficiencies were found in the 22 long, and it was further enhanced by adding a 40 grain bullet, which was at the time used in the uh, 22 extra long, the now long obsolete 22 extra long. Um, the J. Stevens Company in Chicopee, Massachusetts, um, down on the Connecticut River, was the company that founded the uh, 22 long rifle uh, in 1887. And that was really only about 10 years after the J. Stevens uh, Tool and Arms Company got into business. Uh, I think they got into business uh, just, just a year before the Civil War ended in 1864. Um, but it's been around an awful long time. Now, something only lasts uh, a long time if it's useful. And as you know, uh, the 22 long rifle cartridge is used in all manner of firearms. Uh, derringers, uh, revolvers, automatic pistols. Uh, it's used in uh, rifles of all types. It's used in uh, over and unders where there's a shotgun and 22 combination. Uh, and, it, and, be, and even though it was uh, even though it was established so many years ago in the United States of America, uh, it has found a home uh, all around the world. And it's used in uh, international competition in the Olympics uh, and in, in uh, both summer and winter Olympics for that matter and in World Cup competitions. Uh, there's probably no other cartridge that uh, comes close to it in terms of its um, usefulness all around. Um, you know, if you're, if you're a person who if you're a person who lives in a compact part of uh, some uh, cities uh, where you just, you, you know, it's a three hour drive to the nearest uh, outdoors uh, where you can shoot, uh, a 22 becomes a very uh, nice thing to have because, you know, there's usually a club nearby where there's an indoor range uh, that, you can, that you can shoot to your heart's content. So, uh, and, and it's, a, it's an extremely accurate, it's an extremely accurate round. Uh, and it's and it's capable of it's capable of being used in uh, survival guns. Uh, it has it has for you know for for many for many years the military uh, issued uh, 22 both for training and for um, and for survival uh, purposes. Now we'll talk some more about uh, the different types of the different types of firearms that uh, are available with the 22. I'm going to stay focused today on uh, rifles for the most part. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the ammunition first of all, and then it gives you some sort of a background as to uh, what's useful. Um, 22, 22 ammunition, let's go over the, over the basics right here. I've got, I've, got the three, I've got the three rounds set up here if I can do this without tipping them over. Um, this is the this is the original 22 short right here with this 29 grain bullet. This is a CCI uh, CB long. Now this is a this is a long cartridge, but with a reduced powder charge, which gives a 29 grain bullet uh, a, a virtually silent report uh, in a in a uh, rifle. It won't it won't function uh, because of its um, very low uh, intensity. It won't cycle uh, automatic actions, but uh, it's, it's a fabulous gun to have for, uh, for, for plinking or for, for small vermin elimination, you know, uh, rodents. Uh, and here's the, here's the standard 
22 long rifle with its 40 grain bullet. And of course the that's the standard bullet weight. Uh, we'll talk about the types of bullets. Uh, the, the 22 short uh, is still a, is still an incredibly uh, useful and accurate uh, cartridge. And there are there are still some there are still some fine uh, 22s out there that uh, are capable of using the uh, 22 short. Uh, it's a it's a round which has to be it has to be fed through a, a mechanism which is designed to support that short length and uh, without without getting uh, into into jams. Uh, it certainly, it can't be used in any of the auto loading rifles that are currently being made, to my knowledge. Um, and it and it's difficult to use in some uh, bolt action uh, rifles. Uh, but there are still quite a number of rifles that advertise short, long, and long rifle marked right on their barrel, and those are very useful. Um, but because because over the last, I would say in my in my lifetime, in the last uh, four, 35 or 40 years or so, the uh, great popularity of the 22 long rifle has really put the 22 short uh, in the back seat. And unfortunately, whereas one time, you know, when I was a kid, uh, a box of 22 shorts cost 30% less than a box of 22 long rifles. That situation now is, is greatly reversed. It may, it may be in some cases where a box of 22 shorts can be twice or three times the price of a comparable 22 long rifle. Why is that? Mainly it's a matter of, it's a matter of uh, uh, popularity and call. Uh, the, there is no call for the 22 short anymore. Uh, they sit on the dealer's shelf and nobody Nobody buys them, so they've become a they become a special production item, like a lot of cartridges. So when something is not being produced on a on a large scale, uh, the, the, basically the factory has to schedule a time where it will produce something on a limited on a limited run basis, uh, and it requires special it requires special attention. They have to run so many before they get things right. Uh, you know the overproduction issues and all sorts of stuff. So. The price is jacked way up out of out of proportion to its um, to its uh, raw materials, but it's still a great cartridge for those who want to have uh, fun shooting uh, shooting in, a, in in areas where noise becomes an issue, um, and they they can be they can be extremely accurate. The um, the 22 long, as I told you, uh, has been largely discontinued by most manufacturers. CCI still. Uh, occasionally makes them. Uh, they make them in this in this uh, CB long version, which is probably one of the more useful ones because uh, it does it does serve a specific purpose. It it has a it it hardly can be heard. Um, it's it's actually more silent than some uh, than some high power uh, compressed air rifles. Now the uh, we'll talk now about the 22 long rifle. It's uh, it, and it you know for those of you who I know that some people are confused about the, the naming system which is used in the industry. Um, a 22 long rifle doesn't mean a rifle is long. Uh, it's, it's just the name of the cartridge that was um, that was developed uh, during the black powder era. Now, the 22 long rifle was originally established with that 40 grain bullet, as I said. And when they bored a hole in it to make it a hollow point, it became a 38 grain bullet in most cases. Now, that particular bullet weight and shape uh, has has been found uh, through the years to be extremely uh, capable of extreme accuracy and stability. Um, and throughout a throughout a, a velocity range of about a uh, thousand eighty, a thousand sixty feet per second, up to about uh, eleven hundred and uh, 1180 or 1245, something like that. That's that's the typical range uh, of velocity for both standard and high velocity 22 long rifles. In the last uh, in the last number of years, I would say that especially in the last 25 to 30 years, um, the manufacturers have uh, certainly become aware of the fact that. People love speed. 
uh, no matter what it is. I mean, it's, whether it's sports cars, uh, you know, it, whether it's boats, uh, whether it's ammunition, people love speed, and they love to they love to have the fastest possible ammunition on the block. So they've accommodated that by uh, providing what has largely been called, generally, g generically been called hypervelocity um, 22 ammunition. Um, the, the 22 long rifle, as I told you, with its standard 40 grain bullet, we'll, we'll, we'll center on that for a minute and then we can, we can venture off and talk about the hypervelocity stuff. The speed of sound is slightly over 1100 feet per second at sea level. Um, ammunition, 22 long rifle ammunition falls astride that number. So you can have ammunition which is, which is what's called uh, standard velocity. Now in our modern lexicon, it's been more sexy to put on the box subsonic, okay, same thing. Subsonic, standard velocity, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a new word for the same thing. Uh, anybody, who, anybody who bought sub, uh, subsonic ammunition in 2015 or 2016 is buying the same velocity ammunition that, that uh, was marked on a box as standard velocity back in uh, the 1950s. So ammunition which, ammunition which falls uh, below the speed of sound is generally called now subsonic or standard velocity ammunition which is uh, categorized above that uh, in the, you know, in the 1200 uh, foot per second range is generally called high velocity ammunition in the in what we would call the standard non hyper velocity uh, category of ammunition. In other words, this this particular this this particular bullet right here, uh, cartridge right here that I showed you. Now, <clears throat> it's important to note when you're when you're understanding what uh, the the speed and the speed of sound, what the speed of sound has to do with all this. It's important to note what that has to do with accuracy. I was just reading. I was just reading on a uh, particular uh, review. Uh, I think it was on Midway USA. I was reading a review of a particular cartridge, that a 22 cartridge that uh, was it was a it was a high velocity uh, model, um, and the uh, reviewer gave it uh, three stars because he said it performed fine. Uh, inside 50 or 60 yards, but then all of a sudden the accuracy fell apart. Well, um, anybody who understands what high velocity 22 ammunition is with 40 grain bullets uh, understands that that's true and that's expected. That's not that's not uh, that's not an irresponsible de design feature by the manufacturer, and nobody was nobody was giving him crummy quality ammunition. Um, it's it's a it's a law of physics that took over at sixty or so yards. You see, you know anybody who's been in a in a um, power boat, a motor boat, with a you know with a uh, uh, boat that gets up in planes and, and creates a wake behind it, as if the throttle were to be immediately cut, you know, and sometimes that happens when people are coming in uh, to the beach or something like that. They immediately cut the throttle and uh, everybody loses their balance on board and everything and spills their drinks. But then when they cut the throttle, uh, a couple of seconds later, all of a sudden that wake splashes into the back of the transom and it really upsets the apple cart and everybody is really, uh, you know, the, the boat is destabilized. Now, when you have a bullet in flight at uh, hypersonic velocity, when you have a, a bullet in flight over the speed of sound. It's broken through the sound barrier uh, when, it's, when it's taking off from the barrel. It's already broken through the sound barrier. And that's that, that's that distinctive snap that you hear uh, with high velocity ammunition. You hear that crack uh, that, that's distinctive with a, uh, high, with a high velocity uh, 22 shell. That distinctive crack when it breaks through the sound barrier uh, that that means that it's it's traveling with a wake behind it, just like that just like that boat is. It's dragging is dragging a wake from the all the way from the, the nose of the bullet from the tail of the bullet, and that is following it. 
when the when the bullet drops below the speed of sound at whatever whatever speed that is that day with the humidity conditions and the you know the atmospherics the pressure and everything whatever the sea level is when that bullet suddenly uh, s slows down and breaks below the speed of sound the same thing that happens with the boat occurs with the bullet the bullet is just there's nothing that can be done about it the, the bullet is suddenly struck and swamped by its own wake so a bullet which is traveling with extreme accuracy out to maybe 50 or 60 maybe 75 yards just depending on its depending on its shape and initial velocity uh, it, it ultimately slows down sometime before 75 yards generally with a with a 22 and that wake swamps it and destabilizes it all manner of things can go wrong at that point uh, some some ammunition uh, will continue if, it, if it's a good if it's a good stable uh, 40 grain bullet which has long been considered the most stable of all the bullet weights for the 22 long rifle if it's a if it's a long stable uh, 40 grain bullet uh, it will it will continue to to basically try to thwart that uh, instability and it will arrive on target with pretty good accuracy out to maybe 100 yards or so and uh, with, with, with probably little indication that it's keyholing or anything like that. If you examine the paper, the bullets will usually be uh, in, in a nice, nice circular holes in the, in the uh, paper. Uh, everything, everything is pretty good. The problem occurs, especially with what's called hypersonic, uh, what they've classified as hypersonic um, ammunition. You know, an Aguilar, uh, Remington, they, they all have got CCI, they have all got their different versions uh, of, and pedigree of hypersonic ammunition. They're all classified as having usually uh, lighter than standard bullet weights, uh, 32 grains, 36 grains, things like that. Um, that you know, one of the way, there's, there's really two ways of increasing increasing velocity. One is to increase the pressure in the barrel, which is that's that's something that they don't have. Uh, they don't have much latitude with a with a 22. A 22 has to uh, stay within certain pressure limits. Otherwise, uh, it can it can destroy the gun, or it can slap the on a on an auto loader it can slap the bolt back uh, so forcibly that it does damage to the gun. So they, they don't have any latitude when it comes to uh, the, the exceeding pressure. So they have to stay within pressure limits. The other thing that they can do is maybe change the burning rate of the powder and so that it has a little bit more burn time down the barrel. Uh, maybe, maybe they can fuss around with some of the chemistry involved to increase its velocity. But usually the, the way that they achieve uh, hypersonic velocity is, is a combination of some sort of chemical uh, additive in the powder or, or burning rate, but it's, it always has to do with uh, a lighter weight bullet. Lighter weight bullets, you know, can be achieved in two ways. Also, you can you can achieve it uh, either by uh, cutting uh, the lead off the bullet itself, in other words, reducing the weight of the bullet, which reduces its length. Or, in order to affect the same length, you can change the alloy and so that it becomes lighter and easier to propel with less with less initial resistance uh, and they do all that all right all these different things are done in order to provide hyper velocity now here's the there's a paradox involved with all this physics comes into play and nobody has much control over it uh, the faster the faster uh, most hypersonic, uh, hypervelocity uh, ammunition is driven with a 22. Uh, conversely, the, the shorter, typically that I found that the shorter uh, the range uh, on its, uh, I should say, the, the shorter its accurate range. And that's very easy to understand also because shorter or lighter bullets, either way, whether they're shorter and lighter or whether they're as long and lighter, uh, they don't have the same density and penetration through the air, through the atmosphere, and because they don't, uh, the atmosphere grabs them uh, and slows them down that much quicker. 
Uh, this is the same thing that occurs with this is the same thing that occurs with high velocity uh, all all high velocity ammunition. Whenever you change the bullet weight and you go to a lighter bullet weight, you get higher initial velocity, but you get less carry downrange. You don't have as you don't have as long a range. That's why uh, l long. Uh, 20, uh, 22 caliber uh, 223 bullets have become popular with fast twist barrels because those long those long bullets with extreme uh, high ballistic coefficient are capable of penetrating uh, downrange a lot longer even though the initial velocity is frequently several hundred feet per second slower coming out at the gate. So what what occurs with what occurs with the 22 long rifle is the same exact thing. Uh, you know, when you you can come out of the gate uh, real fast, but at at some point downrange you pay for that because at some point uh, that initial velocity is quickly shed, uh, and that that bullet will slow down very quickly, whereas the the longer heavier bullet continues downrange, uh, less impeded by uh, by drag. And and curiously enough, I've I've noticed that well, for instance, I've got I've got some. Um, Winchester uh, PowerPoint. Um, I, I kind of keep these keep these special because I've got I've got just a little over one uh, brick of them. Uh, they're they're very special to me. They're, they're, they're a forty grain they're a forty grain load, uh, but they're but they're loaded up. I believe it's twelve hundred and forty five feet per second. I don't have my paperwork with me right here to say, but I believe it's twelve hundred and forty five feet per second, which is a good it's, it's roughly 100 feet per second faster than most 22 long rifle ammo, and that 40 grain bullet is even a hollow point. So, and that's that's another thing. They've added two grains of bullet weight. They've used the standard. Uh, they've used the standard bullet weight of a of a round nose lead bullet, but still with the hollow point. So I've sacrificed nothing, and it, it makes for a very it makes for a much longer, heavier bullet. And even though the velocity doesn't sound anywhere near as sexy as some of the stuff that's just speeding out at two, maybe even 300 feet per second faster, when it gets down to 75 or 80 yards, it's still cruising along very accurately, and it still has it has plenty of punch, uh, more energy way out there than the lightweight bullets have, even though their muzzle velocity and muzzle energy might uh, be superior. But you know, things are not shot at the muzzle, and that's where uh, I'll try to someday talk about uh, various uh, various aspects of shooting, but you know, the world is fascinated by muzzle velocity. Everybody just looks at muzzle velocity, but they don't look at, they don't look at extended velocity and what a, what a cartridge is doing downrange. And that's where it counts, because that's where, that's where your target is. So if you're, if you're busy, uh, if you're busy buying, um, you know, 22 ammo online or your local uh, you know, Bass Pro Shop or something like that, or your local hardware store. Try to keep in mind um, what it is that you're trying to achieve. Uh, hypersonic hypersonic ammunition can be a lot of fun to shoot because you know it does have a distinctive report. Uh, it, it gets out there real fast, and if you're shooting if you're shooting water, you know, if you're shooting plastic water bottles, I mean, they really they really are, are very uh, impressive, um, and they cost a lot. So, you know, even though you get a bigger splash on target, you know, you're paying for all this. That's fine. And, and I don't, I don't uh, you know, I like to do it too. Everybody enjoys, enjoys uh, splashing water balls and making a, making a mess of uh, water balloons. That's, that's a great sport. But <coughs> hyper, hyper velocity stuff, uh, I can tell you within, within 15 or 20 yards where you're going to be shooting the average squirrel, uh, you make an absolute mess of the squirrel. It's not dinner fair. You're not going to be sitting down that night and enjoying that squirrel. Um, and the same thing with the same thing with uh, cottontail rabbits or, or the hares that we have up in uh, these these parts. Um, you know, you want to have something that is, that, that's a little bit more uh, sedate when it hits the target because it, that stuff that stuff doesn't require much mu muzzle energy and much impact. Mostly, it's a matter of hitting them. Um, and the ho a standard hollow point does a pretty nice job. And not only that, but you know. Uh, most standard velocity, I should say, standard high velocity ammunition, the, the, the normal high velocity 22 ammunition, has got uh, incredible, incredible uh, socking power. You know, it, it hits hard, 
at, at the typical uh, ranges where small game is shot. So when I say the typical ranges where most small game is shot, 40, 50 yards or something. Um, you know, occasionally maybe if, if, see I live in New England, if you're living, if you're living out west and you're shooting prairie dogs and stuff like that, I'm, I'm talking to the wrong people anyway because you're probably, you need the, the 17 Remingtons, all that stuff to get out there. And those are, those are fine cartridges, but let's stay with the 22 a minute and understand the, the philosophy behind, uh, you know, watching, watching the, uh, characteristics of the ammunition and don't just simply buy a box because it's got the highest velocity on the shelf. Uh, you know, buy it if you want it and have fun with it, but be mindful of what it does when it's downrange. It's, it's going to slow down a lot quicker. Um, you know, lightweight bullets basically come out of the barrel with the brakes on. They, as, soon as, you, as soon as you launch them from the barrel, uh, they're, they're, they're cruising to a stop. Uh, the, the velocity slows down tremendously. And whatever, whatever, even if they keep the same velocity up or even exceed the velocity of the heavier bullet, when they get smacked in the tail end with that wake that, that collides, that, that sound wave that collides, they upset a lot easier and more violently than uh, the standard 40 grain or 38 grain bullet will. So keep that stuff in mind and understand the difference between uh, the different uh, things. In my experience, and you know, I've, I've shot these things in all manner of guns. Uh, in my experience, the, the technology that was accomplished by the J. Stevens company back in 1867, putting a 40 grain bullet into a long rifle case, they had it right to begin with. You know, they, they, had, they had the numbers correct right to begin with. Uh, and and it, it seems like it seems like all efforts to to somehow uh, improve on that end up being just a better mouse trap, but it doesn't necessarily ca catch mice any better. Um, it's it's a it's a fascinating thing that sometimes the sometimes the, the, the knowledge that people had years ago before technology, before computers, before chronographs, it was just it's, it's fabulous that they could ever come up with that stuff. And the, the way 22s are made figures significantly into how, uh, into how accurate they are. Now I've seen an awful lot of it, it it's, I say it's urban legend. There's, there's a lot of urban legends that go around and I'm always fighting them because most of them are bogus. Uh, here's another one that I find is largely bogus. Well, it may be true that certain rifles prefer certain ammunition over others. Uh, th there's a broad brush that's often used, I see on the web, that all rifles uh, rule into themselves and you have to test all ammunition before you know if they're accurate. Well, that doesn't, that's really not true. That's, that's, a, that's a gross misrepresentation and a gross exaggeration. Um, Accurate ammunition is accurate ammunition. Uh, if you categorize all the most accurate ammunition out there, whether it's made by Lapua, uh, Ely, uh, you know, Winchester, Remington, if you, take, if you take all their different, and I'm not saying that necessarily Remington and Winchester has the ammunition which is equivalent to Lapua and, and Ely, but if you, take, if you take all the top crust 22 ammunition, and test them together, you're going to find that they're all extremely good. They're all extremely good. Then if you take all their, their bottom draw stuff, uh, I don't know if Ely and Lapua don't even make bottom draw stuff. They make, they make what, they make club ammunition and things like that that, that is lower priced. But you know, all their stuff is uh, superior quality. Uh, but if you, if you take, if you take the, the bottom of the totem pole stuff, and when I'm Talking about that, I'm talking about your, you know, your typical box store stuff. I got this at I got this at uh, Wally World back about um, oh, I don't know two years ago, three years ago during the great during the great uh, 22 depression. Um, all I can say is that that stuff, it, the fact that it's in the box means that the machine was running. That's about the only thing I can say about it. The the, the stuff is pit pat boom bang boom. It's every Every time I pull the trigger, it's a different sound coming out of it. 
Some of it, some of it's subsonic, some of it's hypersonic, some of it's supersonic. It just, it's amazing. Uh, I'm not even sure if I like to fire it in my gun because I'm not sure if, if, if it's that, if it's made that carelessly and that haphazardly, uh, it means that some of it could be a little bit overcharged. Um, but that's not just because it's, that's not just because it's, you know, and I'm not trying to fault Remington. Uh, this, this was, this was made during the Great 22 Depression a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, they're filling a void. Uh, you know, the, the, the public was screaming for, for ammunition, so they were running the machine to top speed and pouring out ammunition without regard to quality control, probably basically suspending all quality control except for just the safety quality control, just to make sure that maybe there they was not overcharges. But it, it's characteristically, when you buy, when you buy, you know, the, the bottom price ammunition, it's going to be, it's going to be very, very inexpensive uh, compared to the other stuff, and it's also going to be very uh, cheaply made, and it's going to uh, be horrible uh, in terms of accuracy. This stuff here, um, it, 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 will, it will go so far as to maybe make a, a, a three and a half or four inch circle at 25 yards, which is pretty, pretty miserable. Um, but it's, it's, the, it's the stuff that I can load the gun with, take my Brittany out in the woods, uh, you know, and I can, I can the, he loves to hear the gun shoot. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm just simply, you know, knocking pine cones off at a distance so he can go run off and, and chase the pine cone and bring it back, that's all that keeps him happy and that's what that stuff is for. It's good for shooting at uh, clods of dirt uh, down the sand pit or something. But if I want to, if I want to actually hit anything with it, it's not the stuff to count on. Um, and they're not the only ones in the. They're not the only ones in that game. Uh, well, there's a lot of promotional. There's a lot of promotional stuff out there. You know, this this is a case of uh, 22 that I got again. It was during back during that period when uh, ammo was hard to find. It's more of a collector's anything. Collector's item than anything else. It's got some 22 uh, Winchester 22 Wildcat ammunition. You know, be careful of be careful of what's in a name. Uh, it's wild, all right. It's wild all over the place. Um, it, it's it's very it's it's probably a little bit better than that uh, than that uh, Remington um, junk, but it's not a lot better. Um, it's uh, then you have, but don't don't discredit all bulk ammunition. This stuff here happens to be. Um, this is terrific stuff. Uh, I, I buy this uh, whenever I see it, which is not all that often, uh, but this is, this is the federal champion. It uh, comes in a bulk pack, and you know, if you're, if you're buying ammo in a bulk pack, you're basically uh, providing them a savings over this type of box here. These boxes have to be uh, specially packed by a machine which can stack them uh, in a box. Uh, the, that tech, I'd love to see that technology uh, that's been around for years. But uh, it, 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 it obviates that particular part of the production and can keep the price a little lower. So even though Federal makes a champion that comes in the individual 50-round uh, boxes, this stuff, if you don't mind the fact that they're getting banged around and that they may not necessarily um, remain perfectly true in all respects because of their the packaging method, uh, if you don't mind that, uh, it, it's, good, it's good value. Um, you know the very best, the very best ammunition is always going to be packaged uh, in order to preserve that accuracy. So I've got some Lapua uh, L. Uh, these are, you know, these are packed in the same type of box that CCI has used in the past and everything, where they're individually cradled like in, a, in an egg crate. So this stuff preserves their their accuracy uh, when you're storing them. And you have these, you have these packs right here. This is this is the way CCI packs and a lot of companies pack their stuff uh, with with hundred with uh, in packs of hundred. So, but all that stuff is all part of the game. Right now, we're still we're still emerging out of the uh, twenty two depression. Uh, we're still we're still finding shortages of um, supplies in money, in most stores and most shelves. So. Uh, but but keep in mind if you if you if you're buying if you're buying ammunition, you know not all ammunition has to be uh, super target grade. 
Uh, super target grade ammunition is generally bought by people when they're going into competition, you know, whether they're going into the biathlon or shooting in a small bore competition or something like that. Then they'll spend then they'll spend the big bucks on a couple of boxes and you know they, they, they get new clothes and everything else and they appear before the public uh, to do their best. But you know you don't have to feel as if you have to go out and buy that stuff that shoots uh, so accurately uh, with almost guaranteed accuracy um, with every shot. So then you can, you can drop down uh, a few a few dollars per hundred uh, and you get into a, a, a higher category, the person who maybe uh, shoots every Thursday night or something down the club uh, and it basically just shoot Mickey Mouse matches, they're shooting practice matches that are they're not necessarily for they're not necessarily for the gold. There's nobody nobody's winning trophies, but you're just shooting against everybody else that night. Uh, that's that's your I would say uh, the medium rare stuff. You got the rare stuff at the top, you get the medium rare. Now we're talking about the medium now. The medium stuff is where I like to buy. Uh, it's not the cheapo. Uh, it's it's this it's this stuff right here. Um, it, it's uh, you know ammunition prices along with that 22 depression. The ammunition prices have doubled. Um, you know we're paying we're paying again uh, twice as much as we were paying four years ago for uh, 22 ammunition, and there's less of it. So naturally, uh, people are willing to pay for it just because it's there. Um, the uh, there are some there are some certain bargains out there for some extremely good ammunition. I just you know this this stuff I probably shouldn't mention it because uh, everybody's going to be buying it up. But this particular stuff here, Wolf, and it comes in it comes in two different grades. It, the Match Gold is their very best one. Um, I found this to, I found this stuff to be absolutely superb. Um, this will shoot along with Ely 10X uh, in, most, in most cases, uh, with most rifles. Um, the, the lubricate is a standard velocity round, uh, and, and the lubrication is somewhat greasy. Um, it's not, it, has a, it has almost a sweet smell to it, which is typical of European ammunition. And that's, made, that's not made uh, like the wolf stuff that's made in Russia for the centerfire cartridge. This is made in Germany. Um, and it's, and it's um, but it uses uh, I believe it's vitivori powder. It has that. It has that distinctive smell. Um, but for whatever it is, it's extremely. It's extremely accurate, and it runs about half the price. Uh, you know, you can get it through Sinclair usually in places like that. But uh, it usually runs about half the price of uh, you know the high grade uh, Ely 10X or the Lapor um, match grade stuff, and yet it shoots with extremely good accuracy. Um, I've had I've had some disappointments in recent years with domestic made. Uh, federal seem to maintain good quality control, uh, and on occasion, but on occasion I found that uh, it's difficult to find decent Remington and Winchester stuff on the shelves because they they really only make their PowerPoint stuff, the the Super X and stuff like that. That's always been good. I've never found any problems with it whatsoever. Uh, but much of their production seems to be centered now around. Uh, you know, producing just garden grade uh, planking ammunition. Now I spoke about high velocity uh, ammunition. Um, you know, uh, the the supersonic stuff above the speed of sound. The second paradox that I'm going to talk about is uh, standard velocity ammunition. Standard velocity ammunition uh, at 100 yards will generally be, and I always, I always. Uh, put a caveat on everything because I say generally it's not always the case. Don't write in and tell me well you're, that's not your situation. But generally speaking, the best standard velocity ammunition at 100 yards is more accurate than the best high velocity ammunition at 100 yards, and that's because it never has to bounce down below. It doesn't have to rumble through uh, the shock wave. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't get caught up in the rapids downrange. Uh, so it basically, in other words, it's, it's the, the the sound wave is is arriving ahead of time, and then the bullet comes in after it, follows in after second place, and that's that's what keeps it accurate because uh, it never it never encounters that instability in flight. So if it starts out accurate, if you've got ammunition that will uh, cut pinwheels 
at 50 feet uh, on an NRA 50 foot bullseye, if you've got, if you've got ammunition that'll constantly uh, pierce out the center of a silver, silver dollar, every single, and I don't, I don't, I don't prefer you do that please, but uh, send it to me. But if you, if you have a gun that has that kind of accuracy at 50 feet, uh, it's going to have that same kind of accuracy at 100 yards. It's not going to. It's not going to divert much. You're going to have. You're going to have minute of angle accuracy out of a 22, provided you don't have any wind or anything. Uh, and and ammunition which starts if it's high velocity ammunition. It's difficult to find extremely high velocity. You know, it's hard to find high velocity ammunition that has uh, exceptional accuracy. Uh, you know, at say 25 or uh, 50 yards. It has hunting grade accuracy. It has the type of accuracy which is more than sufficient. It'll be maybe two MOA. It'll be now. What's two MOA? I've 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 talked about this before. One minute of angle MOA is one inch per hundred yards downrange. So at hundred yards you got uh, one inch. At two hundred yards you got two inches and so forth. And at fifty yards, uh, one MOA is a half an inch. So. You know, don't get confused with terms. If 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 you have a, somebody at the bench beside you and you're shooting one inch groups and he's, he's shooting at a 22 target at 50 yards and he's saying he's shooting one MOA, you can correct him and tell him the truth. You, you get a two MOA gun, which is not bad. Um, any any 22 off the shelf that shoots uh, one inch groups at uh, 50 yards is a very fine, <laughs> very fine production gun. So. If you really want accuracy, if you really want the best accuracy, stay in the uh, subsonic range. So we're going to talk now, and now I can bring up something else. Uh, you know, whether a cartridge uh, starts out subsonic or supersonic, in many cases, uh, has to do with barrel length. Um, there's a there's a certain there's a certain fact that uh, most 22 handguns uh, won't actually, uh, you know, fire uh, high velocity ammunition uh, at supersonic speed. Uh, they won't usually, I, I did all kinds of chronographing down in my basement one day. I chronographed, I think it was 30 different kinds of ammunition and I chronographed it out of my uh, seven and a half inch uh, Ruger uh, US government model uh, pistol. And none of none of the none of the the regular what you'd say not the hypersonic but none of the uh, supersonic uh, 1200 or 1250 foot per second loads none of them came out at supersonic levels they all stayed below the uh, speed of sound so that ammunition you know whether you whether you buy high velocity ammunition or not when you're firing it and that's a long pistol. So if you're firing if you're firing supersonic velocity ammunition out of a pistol, you can expect that it's not going to reach supersonic levels. It's going to be staying subsonic, and that's why that's why a lot of people find that uh, ammunition that shoots terribly at 60 yards with their with their rifle can shoot magnificently out of uh, out of a handgun, a good quality handgun, because it's staying below that. It's staying behind the shock wave. It's that. Talking now about, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the rifles themselves um, and what we're trying to achieve. Now, I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, please, that's not my intent. I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to improve the level of marksmanship in this country as much as I can by imparting some of my knowledge so that people at least understand. Uh, what it is that we're trying to achieve, what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, my wife and I uh, had the pleasure of going to the Lillehammer Olympics in 1994, which seemed like it was just yesterday, but it's a long time ago now. Uh, and we stood out in the freezing cold and got our, got our feet uh, frozen stiff, uh, standing out watching uh, biathlon competitors from all around the world. Um, and I was very greatly saddened by the fact that the United States of America, uh, that has the it's the only government in the world that guarantees in writing that you have the right to keep and bear arms and that one nation was not able to uh, not able to bring up a biathlon team that uh, was worthy of competing in the in the Olympic medals um, 
they finished. You know, we had some we had some wonderful competitors, uh, and and I and I applaud them for their efforts because they, you know, to to go and compete at that level is an extreme. Uh, it's an extreme accomplishment. It means that they're world class, and I don't take that away from them. But they, you know, we we didn't have we didn't have a big team in order to be able to win those those competitions. You know, the the, the countries that entered those competitions and won uh, at the top at the top level were not the countries that guarantee uh, anybody's right to, to a gun. Uh, in most of those cases, uh, the gun is controlled by uh, a government closet, and the person has to go and shoot on government uh, government certified uh, training grounds, and that's that's the limit to their freedom. Uh, and yet, those are the countries that that provided. Uh, the biggest number of competitors, and they're the ones that, that win these these uh, medals consistently. And it's and it wasn't just in that particular Olympics. It, this is this is a this is an unfortunate uh, trend that's been going on uh, largely since the 60s, um, since the since 1968 when uh, a lot of uh, clamps were put down on uh, U.S. gun ownership. But we need to do better than that. Um, there's I'm bringing this up because the culture that's the culture that's uh, that we're in right now uh, is focused on quantity of fire. Uh, you know, everything everything is more, more, more. Um, you know, everybody wants to have a 20 round magazine or a 30 round magazine uh, or a drum magazine. It's just a matter of pouring out more ammunition. And despite the fact that we're pouring out more ammunition, we've got uh, we've got nothing to show for it. Um, it, it. It's a there is a there is a direct relationship to uh, this whole thing. You know, back when back when uh, shooters when a, when a kid went out with his 38 caliber uh, musket with a ball and patch, and he had to get dinner by shooting it out of a tree with one shot. Uh, he was a careful shot. And he was a great shot. Uh, you know that was it was not it's not about quantity it's about it's about learning to be uh, have great economy of mind being able to understand that it's each and every shot is something which stands for itself we saw this uh, the the biathlon is one of the greatest ways to see this in action um, you know the you've got you've got black circles out there and the person gets done with this arduous cross-country trek with his with his uh, cross-country skis over hill and dale. Uh, he comes in panting like a dog and throwing his throwing his rifle off his shoulder. It's, it's, it's being carried between his shoulder blades on a harness, and he takes he takes that off and flips his flips his muzzle guard down, gets into position, throws the magazine in this this carried. It takes him. It takes him 30 or 40 seconds before he's even in position to fire his first shot, and then he, pow, pow, pow. pow. He has to knock out every single one of those discs. Every one that doesn't, every one of them that doesn't turn white, means that he has to take a lap around the penalty circle. Um, you know, there you see, there you see the results of whether the sh the shooter is capable of adhering to each and every shot with the same accuracy and the same fundamentals and keeping everything together and, and basically keeping his mind glued together uh, for those for just those several shots. It's, it's very, very disheartening to watch uh, where you know somebody has competed at that level and the one thing that they could, you know, maybe see that's the one game where you know you can you can make the other guy pay, even though even though he may be faster than you on the course, maybe maybe he came in ten seconds or twenty seconds ahead of you to the to the firing line, uh, and he's and he's shooting before you do. Uh, he's maybe falling. Uh, he's maybe falling behind on his shooting, and he's missed two or three targets. While the the careful shooter, who's got an economy of mind, is able to shoot like that kid with the ball and musket and knock out every one of those targets, and he continues on free as a bird while the other guy is doing three laps around uh, the circle, uh, which takes him another five minutes. So, 
you know, if you're well, whatever your whatever your game is, uh, if if you're if you're not uh, if you're not of that economy, if you don't understand the economy of shooting, that every single shot counts, every shot. You know, to watch somebody who's shooting in a competition and he has he's he's cut the center of the target out and the X ring is completely gone, and then all of a sudden he he lets go on the last shot and he blows an ace. Well, he just lost the competition, and he lost his trophy, and he's lost his, his chance to his chance at glory, uh, and that's because he didn't follow through. And most shooters these days are not even capable. That, and I know this for a fact. I'm not speaking out of school here. When I go to the range, or when I go to the sand pit, no matter where it is, at any range, and I see the guys unpacking their unpacking their duffels, and they take out all their stuff. Uh, and all their stuff is usually about 10 pounds of ammunition and they just start spraying ammunition downrange at a 15 yard target or a 25 yard target which is standing there, it's usually it's a, it's a, it's a uh, fluorescent, uh, you know, walking dead figure or something. And I just, all I do is I pack up and leave. I really couldn't care less about that stuff. Um, if, if that's your game, then turn the video off because you're not the person that I'm talking to. I'm talking to the person who wants to be able to hit what he's aiming at at any range without, without uh, qualification. And if you're the person who's gadget minded, if you're the person who's, who's got to own everything in the latest Cabela shooting catalog or the latest Bass Pro shooting catalog and have all the, all the gadgets, you know, the, the, the wind meters and the calculators, if, if that's your game, turn this video off too because you're not interested in what I'm talking about. I'm talking to the shooter who has an economy of mind that uh, he can that he can buy whatever ammo is available in the store, whether it's the whether it's the cheap junk or whether it's the high grade stuff, whatever he can find, he's going to make the best use of it, or she's going to make the best use of it, and uh, learn how to shoot. Even the junk, even the junk ammo, I should say, the the stuff that's only capable of shooting, uh, you know two inch groups at 25 yards, you know, that stuff, that stuff in the right hands uh, can make the other person who's shooting his super sexy quality ammunition, uh, it can make, it can make him look terrible. I've, I've watched, you know, when I see a person who uh, can shoot, uh, that's, that's something to behold. I'll never forget there was a, you know, this, this was not a rifle situation, but I'll never forget Quite a number of years ago, I think it was probably about 40 years ago, I went to a trap range, a, a skeet range, it was a skeet range one night in a town nearby. Um, and they were having, the, all, the, all the floodlights were on, they were having a nighttime, they were having nighttime uh, skeet and trap. And uh, I, wanted to go out and the, I wanted to go out and shoot skeet. I, I was always a trap shooter, but I never shot that much skeet that, until then. So, but I wanted to go out and shoot skeet and I, I had my... I had my 12 gauge, my 12 gauge uh, gun, and I had my skeet choke screwed in, skeet number one. And I'm 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 going around, and there was a fellow who was uh, shooting number five in the in the group, and this guy had it was an old rusty beat up uh, single shot um, 410 shotgun. Now he couldn't shoot the doubles, you know he couldn't shoot the doubles. But he never missed anything. Now he's shooting with a half a teaspoon of shot, uh, with with basically amounts to a more of a shooting like with a rifle than with a shotgun. And he cleaned them up, one after another. So he cleaned up 25. Then he went around again. And he did another 25. He shot 50 in a row. And I know that he could have shot another three uh, 50s. It didn't make any difference. The guy just was uncanny with a gun. Uh, he could shoot with his eyes closed. So. It's not, you know, anybody who was standing there just looking, or if you're taking a picture, you know, so that poor pathetic guy, you know, he's got a bad gun, you, you know, it's not the right, it's not the right gauge for that sport. It's, it's, you know, he's really handicapped and it's a crummy old gun. Well, but they, if to, to walk around with that guy uh, and watch him shame everybody else, uh, basically shooting, he could, he could have been hitting those birds with a 22 as far as I'm concerned, he was that good. But this is the type of economy of mind. This is understanding that shooting is not about quantity. Or I should say, for me, it isn't. Now, for you, if it is, it is. Um, but that's not how we get to not. That's not how we get to the uh, competitions, the, the world class competitions, and that's not how we're going to win them. 
So, if you want to do that, if you want to, if you want to compete in world-class competitions, I'm going to bring you back to some basics here. And in the next series, uh, we're going to stay, we're going to stay tuned on this topic. In the next series, I'm going to talk about uh, the correct uh, training method that we use uh, for uh, developing uh, the, the greatest skill. So stay tuned in part two, and we'll be back. God bless.